Good evening. So, we're going to talk tonight about boulders, cobbles, and gold. This is another one of those tips about specifically where you're looking inside the stream bed and what kinds of things that boulders, cobbles will do to the stream flow that you need to keep your eyes open for. I have a, a picture here of a boulder strewn stream bed. Uh, specifically, I wanted to call your attention to a handful of these boulders that are sitting here in the middle of this bed because they'll kind of give you some hint about where you're going to want to look. You can see some of these things right here. Another one over here just kind of lo locked together with the other one. There's one right here. And there are some more, including a couple that are underwater. What is this going to tell you about where gold would be and where it wouldn't be? So we're going to take a little bit more of a detailed look into that. A little inspection of what a boulder will do to flow. Specifically, I'm going to talk about a topic. We'll call it a stagnation point. It's an important aspect of fluid dynamics, and it plays a big role in the concentration of gold. And if you can visualize stagnation points, you're a long way into the business of finding gold where it concentrates, and a long way away from that whole business of gold is where you find it. Yep, it is where you find it. But if you know where a stagnation point is, you know where to find it more likely than not. And that's what's important here. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. But I just want to make sure you're tuned in to boulders, cobbles, and gold. What it is that concentrates gold and what you're looking for when you're looking at the stream bed. So let's take a look. First thing I'm going to do is check in with you guys. Make sure we got everybody on board. Got 20 people here. That's good. And we got a handful of comments already. Let's check to make sure we got audio coming through. Well, let's take a look. First thing I'm going to do. That's it. We got it. So. Chase is here from Wyoming. Wyoming. Say it right, Jess. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day here. Oh, we've got a bunch of... Uh, you know, when your kids start growing up and they start getting kind of independent, like I've got one about ready to be married, uh, it gets to be interesting to see what happens on a daily basis. You, there's just no end of engagement and entertainment because everybody's going in their own direction and then all of a sudden they need your help. And so, sure, glad to. But... Sometimes it's conflict. That's life. So, sound and picture is good, Charles says. Good to see you, Charles. And Brian is here. Uh, the tail out. The tail out. Yes, the tail out. Well, let's take a look at that. Uh, David Johnstone is here, and he's watching. Vic Ta is here from Washington. So, I, I'm sorry, Washington. I keep thinking WA is Washington. No, it's Western Australia. So, uh, and Brian here, Brian is here from Northern California. So we got people from all over the world. We got Redding here and so on. So it's good. Um, great. So let's get going. So tonight we're talking about this boulder strewn thing we're looking at here. Let's take a look closer. Uh, again, this is sponsored by the sourdoughminer.com. The gold, the Gold Prospector's Collection is still available. It's on sale through next Monday, and then it stops. Check out the offer at that link below, sourdoughminer.com slash GPC. Take a look at it. Cost you nothing to look and see what you're, you know, see whether you're interested. Um, the basic thing here is uh, it will give you a good start on all the things I'm talking about. And part of what I'm doing right now is borrowing pieces that come from that. And so you get an idea of what we're talking about. So, um... Right now we're looking at the boulders and cobbles in a stream bed. And like I said before, you know, looking at a few of these, you can kind of see some interesting parts. Notice this one has this kind of a slope on the front edge, and then it kind of goes up like a ski slope and shoots off the back end and abruptly goes down behind it. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, there are others, on the other hand, like this one right here, that have an abrupt curve that kind of goes backwards. So let's erase that. And this one kind of goes backwards. So there's a curve underneath here in the front. And then it pops over the top and goes down the backside. Let's talk about each of those boulder shapes and talk about what that means to you. So I'm going to flip over to the blackboard for a moment. Let's take a look. So the first one we talked about was kind of a ski slope or a ramp. And it looks something like this where the boulder's big. And let's say it kind of goes like this and then comes down and goes 
and sits on, and the key to these things is they're sitting on bedrock. So a boulder like this will tend to, and especially if this front edge is kind of, you know, really laying on bedrock, there might be a small stagnation point right here, but for the most point, most part, the, the flow, let me, re, let me redraw this. Now let me just change colors. So the flow, it goes over the top and does this thing here. And remember we've talked about that before where we get these little eddy currents on the backside. And what that's going to do essentially is pack in the gold behind this boulder, back in this area right in here. There might be a little bit of gold up front here in this small stagnation point, but the majority of it is going to go hiding behind. Or in the case of some flows where it, it, it creates a kind of an eddy, not eddy current, a, a ripple effect through the use of what we call a, a standing wave. That is the flow picks up speed and then slows down again and starts to build up right in here. It's going to be slowing down again. And at that point, even though there's no boulder there, the boulder up front affects where the gold piles up. And there may be some gold on bedrock down in this area too. And this distance will vary. And only if you could see it in its fullest flow would you know where that point would be. But it's right where the water starts to slow down and pile up again. The main thing I'm focusing on in this discussion right now is this area in red. Because that's what that boulder would do. Now let's clear the whiteboard. So we got this one. This is a, a front slope. Not much in the way of a stagnation point on the front. A big stagnation point. Now a stagnation point. What is a stagnation point? A stagnation point is wherever the water flow goes to zero. So for example, when the water comes down here, it can't go under the rock. So by definition, it's zero. Same thing in the front. But if it's got a real steep slope up here, there isn't much of a zone where it's at zero velocity. Everything else is just ripping by and peeling off anything. Any material that it can will peel off and go over the top of this boulder. Any gold will just kind of get taken over the top and pile up behind this boulder where I'm marking in the big yellow X, if you can see that. So the idea is this trap is behind the boulder because of the shape of the boulder and the dynamics of the water flowing over it. The stagnation point, the major one, is on the back side. Now watch what happens if I change the way the geometry of the boulder forms. So let's take a look. And this time I'm going to paint it with the right colors. So we're going to paint the boulder in red. So here's our boulder. But this one is shaped differently. It has a huge, big lip in the front. And then it kind of comes back and does something like this. And let's say this is where it meets with bedrock sort of caught in a little cavity there. And there's no space underneath. Now what happens here with water flow is a little different than what happened with the last one. And that is as the water kind of comes down the stream, boom, it's going to start basically feeling the rock and going over it and then peeling off toward the rear. Now, by feeling the rock, it's going to be creating some, some of that same kind of eddy current flow and essentially it's going to kind of create this, this flow here. And that creates a big pocket in the front where there's a nice big fat zero velocity zone right in here for the gold to start collecting. And perhaps even underneath the boulder. That's why you always want to kind of pry them up and look back underneath because it could even go clear down to this zone down here. But the fact is that in this particular boulder, because of its shape, and, and if I had done it a little bit more, it would have been a little less. There might be a small stagnation point on the back side here, but I've drawn it intentionally kind of avoiding any kind of real trap in the back side. So this is like a reverse riffle. What's going to happen here is that the stagnation point in the front is going to be the major gold trap. So if you look on the back side, you might not see much gold, but if you looked on the front side and dug down underneath, down to bedrock, picked out any kind of gravels or anything else that's underneath here trapped in this in this zone. Let me show it in a, another color, pick green. So this whole zone in here looks suspect and is worthy of digging into. Um, be careful because boulders are heavy. But the fact of the matter is boulders form a great trap and this is one of the mechanisms is this, this stagnation point. 
The point for stagnation, the majority stagnation here is going to be up front. Just draw that arrow right there. Little tiny bit right here, and it's kind of questionable how, how good a stagnation point it is because what's going to happen is there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a swirl back on the back side here, and then it's going to head on out. And that swirl may mix in such a way that it just shoves all the sands and gravels and everything else, including all the gold, right on out the back side. So this is, goes back to our gold traps we talked about a couple weeks ago. But I wanted to bring this up because this is a special kind of concept and it deals with these boulders. And you see them all over in gold country and it's worthy of taking a moment just to kind of capture what happens when you have a boulder like that and what does it do to the stream bed. So now when you look at this boulder, you start seeing, oh, that looks interesting. And not so much there. Maybe, maybe back behind this one for exactly the reasons we just talked. And we don't know behind this one. We have to look at the shape of it to see what happens back here. There could be another trap behind it. It's entirely possible to have a trap on the front and the rear of a boulder because there can be two stagnation points. That's a fact. That has to do with fluid dynamics and essentially uh, the, <clears throat> I'll get it into it, the roots of an equation. In other words, where is it that the water velocity goes to zero. Wherever it goes near zero or even reduces enough is where it's going to start dropping gold out. And that's the thing you want to visualize in your head. What, what happens when the water flows in this direction? Because remember, in this particular stream, the water is flowing downstream kind of in this fashion. So it flows over these boulders and on down around the corner. Okay. So where is it going through here? And causing these turbulent eddies and these these stagnation points to form wherever the brakes get thrown on the gold drops the less the brakes the heavier the gold it takes to drop therefore the heavier gold you'll likely find at that point the finer the gold the more the water wants to be completely stalled out and so that's kind of the principle we're looking for same thing we've talked about before but this summer you're going to want to look for these gold traps because this stuff normally in winter flow if you look carefully you can see it in this picture a little bit notice there's some material here in the trees so normally in the winter flow this water is way probably even over my head you know it's probably up in this area and so that changes the way the whole dynamics work but the flow goes over these boulders nonetheless in the summertime you want to visualize those points and kind of understand what it's doing around this bend and how that affects those points where the stop signs are put up. That's what you're looking for. Just visualize where it's coming to a, to, not to a halt, but slowing down. Wherever there's a traffic jam, gold. Traffic jams and gold have a lot in common. Um, more than you might think. So that's kind of it for tonight. I just want to check in with you and uh, talk about boulders and cobbles and gold. So... Uh, Dan Evans, it's flowing in a flowing stream. How do you keep the water from washing away the material you want to search? Well, that's a good question. Now, if the stream is flowing heavily, then you're going to want to get something that can get in there and get under it as you're going. That's part of why dredges are so popular. Uh, otherwise, you've got to figure out some way of protecting the zone. In reality, most gold, other than flower gold, that's worth going after even in a flowing stream, it's not going to go very far. It's on the bottom already, so it's got its brakes set. The trick is you got to be able to remember where you're working. And then if any material flows back in, all that overburden has to be removed yet again because we want to go to bedrock. Go to bedrock. So that's, uh, you know, this downhill, downstream, go to bedrock. Those are my three big things, okay? So that's kind of it for tonight. Uh, anything else? Anybody else have any questions? That's a good one, David. Uh, Steve Ford is here from Australia. Uh, damn it up. You can, you know, it's a little tricky here in the States uh, and probably there in Australia too about damming things up. You got to be careful about what you do. Make darn sure it's not permanent or you're going to get yourself in a whole lot of hot, well, cold water. <laughs> but the reality is that if you can just move the flow around it and work it while you're, while the flow is working around you, that helps. If the flow is high, though, as it is in a lot of, especially as it will be with the snows melting from the streams here in California and in the Rockies, then you've got to do something else. But uh, so the trick is, uh, like I said, go to bedrock, 
mark the zone where you're working keep track of that with with you know know what kind of landmarks outside of the water you can watch for if you've got yourself a mask and snorkel and whatnot and you can work in the water or or a better yet an air pump uh, then then you can kind of pick up on the local things you're going to have to look for boulders and cobbles and and cracks and fissures that keep keep you where you're going on target and then, uh, unfortunately, as material moves back into the zone, you're going to have to move that material back out. It might concentrate a little bit more gold. It depends on whether there's a pay streak in it. If there is one and it concentrates more gold, then obviously you're going to want to go upstream from wherever that, w that stuff's coming from because it's carrying gold into your, into your uh, prospect, which is an interesting outcome to f have as a problem. <laughs> I stop bringing so much gold. So David Ray Phillips says, awesome. Is there gold in the Four Corners in New Mexico? We have a lot of snow this year. The Four Corners region in New Mexico, um, uh, it's kind of a funny place uh, because of, you know, if you head north toward Durango, there is gold. The gold that you find mostly coming down, like down the Animas River, is a fine gold. And so it's a little tricky to recover. There are quite a few people uh, in our group. Uh, if somebody wants to comment below, uh, feel free to. But there are people who work that stream year-round, especially now. They're working it heavily now. It's a little hard to work when it's really cold. But but the fact is that it can be done. Uh, all that stuff comes out of the mountains up above Ure, well, below Ure and uh, you know below Silverton and works its way down the Animus through, through the area, through Durango and on into New Mexico. So it's... You know, yeah, there is gold in that area. Uh, it's mostly f pretty fine stuff, but there is a fair amount of gold, and there's some huge mines up there in the Silverton and Durango area. But, you know, there's that whole fiasco that happened with the Animus River with uh, the Gold King mine and the uh, EPA doing a big stupid screw-up and kind of pointing the finger at the prospectors and miners rather than themselves. They opened up a mine that they shouldn't have, and they should have known better. They knew better. I don't know what they were thinking, but they dumped a whole lot of tailings and and water that was laden with acid leaches and uh, metals, and, and you know painted the river orange. You know that was a good move. You know for a couple of months, um, and the claim is that they'll never recover. Well, that's not true. That gold has been up there forever. You know, so that river has always had a little bit of mercury and and gold and silver and you know you name it all the stuff that goes with gold so that's kind of it for right now um trish says unfortunately our flat land doesn't have boulders so you're going to be working with largely looking for uh sediments and areas where it flows and flattens out the flow evens out and looking for clays and layers where there are material fine golds that settle into that. Clay layers can catch a lot of gold, fine and coarse. So they're kind of your friend. If you can find those, you found you found a false bedrock. So remember that in the whole process. Uh, Vic Ta says, what's the best man, way for a one-man prospector that can do that's inexpensive? Well, to start with, you know, the best way to start with, gold pan and a sifter, okay? Uh, then I would go with a rock hammer and a, and a shovel. Pick. Two picks. A large pick and a small pick. Large pick because you're going to have to dig some depth. Small pick because you'll need a rock pick to break open some of the samples and you'll also want it to pry and shovel stuff into your, into your uh, pan. It's easier to work with. Once you get to that level, then you're going to want to sh shift gears and probably go into, if you've got an area that you can run some water, you go into using a, a sluice box. A simple sluice like A51 or A52, a Keen sluice or Pro Line has them, Gold Hog has them, you name it. Okay. Um, uh, British Columbia, there's a couple guys up there who manufacture their own uh, great aluminum pan, uh, sluices and things like that. Plastic sluices aren't bad, uh, they're lightweight, they aren't quite as durable as aluminum. So you have to remember when you're messing with these boulders, they tend to break stuff. Um, it's just a fact done that been there um and so that's kind of it but i would start with pan and then a sluice and then go from there uh it's not that expensive to get started doing that that way and frankly it's still my most productive way for doing the general prospecting when i'm scoping out a site that's the equipment i take because it's easy to haul in easy to haul out might take a chisel or two with me uh because i'm looking at some load that kind of stuff 
and I might take, uh, oh, and goggles when you do that. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, a hand lens. You know, there's, there's a handful of equipment. I think I've talked about it earlier in one of the earlier videos. So go look it up. Uh, tools, my favorite tools of prospecting. So that's it for tonight. Uh, again, uh, check out the Gold Prospectors Collection, sourdoughminer.com, GPC. It's only available through this coming weekend, and then it's over. Price goes back up. So just check it out and see what you think. And I'll catch you another time tomorrow night. Good prospecting. Prospector Jess, over and out. And I look forward to talking with you uh, tomorrow night about another topic in gold prospecting. Tonight was boulders, cobbles, and gold. Check it out. Sourdoughminer.com, huntingforgold.com, Prospector Jess. Check out my channel on YouTube and all that good stuff. Subscribe, get connected, stay tuned. Uh, I've got people asking me over there if they can get live uh, interrupts, uh, live uh, notifications uh, on YouTube, and I haven't set that up that way, and I probably should getting a lot of activity over there we are now over 16,000 subscribers so you can join me over there anytime uh, bucket load of videos and they're easy to find over there so check it out and subscribe catch you then good prospecting and good night